Hi, so in this little short video, I'm going to review how to make your worm habitat for your students. So the first thing I have here is our jar. And uh, one thing I'm not gonna do in this video I've already done is uh, pre-drill the holes in this lid. Uh, I'm also gonna show you an alternative way to uh, cover the jar when you're done, but I have my jar and I have this lid. Uh, another thing that uh, may not have happened in the training is I'm gonna take this second uh, container uh, that's smaller than my jar and I'm gonna put it inside notice it's full of water that's gonna keep it stable uh, and and give it some give it some mass so it doesn't doesn't uh, squish too easy but the reason I'm doing this is that it's going to make the worms go to the outside of the container if it's just dirt and sand in here then the worms will have a tendency to go uh, to the middle to, to stay in that safe spot in the middle in the dark uh, and so this pushes them to the outside. It's gonna make it more likely that your students are gonna get to see a worm when you uncover it. So now that I have this done, uh, I'm gonna start adding my layers. So I have my, I have my uh, soil here first, uh, and I've already measured it out. You're gonna wanna measure out about uh, two cups Two cups is going to fill up the layer. Now, if you put a container container in it like I did, you may not need the full two cups. Uh, and I'm just going to pour that in there, and that's okay if it lumps up a little bit. It's gonna be a little messy. You can do this either over a sink or trash can or anything else. Kind of get it in there. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you realize you've got a side that doesn't have as much, and put it in there, tilt it around a bit. I'll clean all this up later. All right, and then I'm going to add my sand. So I have my sand, I've already measured that out too. This is about a cup and a half. So about a cup and a half of the sand is what you'll use. Just take that, once again, kind of pour it around, especially if you're, if you're using another container, then you want that, you wanna kind of get it even around it doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect layers. Okay, but you can see it's real easy to tell that I have separate layers on each one. Now I'm gonna put my worm food. So I have my worm food, and I've already got some in this container. I'm gonna put a little bit more, okay, and it needs to be moist. Uh, now, I didn't say this a second ago, but you also want your soil and your sand to be moist. Uh, mine already were, but if for some reason uh, your soil and your sand is dried out, then you want to take a spray bottle and spray some water on there because you want it to be moist. Those uh, those worms are going to need that moisture. It'll it'll be a problem if the the uh, sand and the soil are not moist. But here I have it dry, and so I'm going to add some water to this. You want you want the food to be kind of damp, um, so doing it in a container like this, kind of get it in there. You want it to be moist. Once again, the, they're going to need that moisture. Okay. You can kind of get, get your fingers a little messy with it. Uh, one thing to also do is to have some tongs. And that'll help it from being so messy. But once you get uh, that kind of moist, get it damp, okay, you can add some of that around the edge. And this doesn't need to be a super thick layer. They just need... They just need some food to go around. And you want it to make sure, once again, if you're using a container like this, that you have it go all the way around. You can see I'm not worried about being perfect. I'm also not worried about getting messy. Might get a little messy, that's okay. Especially if you're doing it with the kids. Messy can be fun. And so I have my layer all the way around. Okay, so I have soil, sand, and the food, and now I'm just gonna repeat that process. Soil, sand, food, soil, sand, food, until I get to the top. So here I have the uh, finished product after I've added all the soil and sand and food, and so you can see I have that soil, sand, and food that we did in the first part, and I've gone ahead and gone soil, sand, food again, and then finish it off with some soil at the top. 
Now the last thing to do is to add some worms. So you're gonna to wanna to add about three to five worms. I have my worms right here. And so I can just take some, put them at the top. So this can be a fun thing. You wanna be a little gentle with them. And now I'm ready to add my top. Once again, you wanna make sure this is moist. You wanna make sure your soil is moist. Uh, if it's not, dampen it with a little, little spray bottle of water. Now, there's a couple options. You have the lid that has the pre, uh, pre drilled holes in it. I can just screw that on, but if you wanna do this again, you don't wanna to have to drill those holes, or you, you feel like it's not getting enough air, you can take a hose, and this is just a knee-high stocking, and you can put it over the top. And then you'll probably wanna secure that with a rubber band. You wanna make sure that there's airflow so that you can get some airflow. You don't want any kind of fungus or mildew to grow in here, but those worms are gonna need air. There needs to be air going in to this container. So this hose on top will allow there to be airflow, but you also don't want your worms to get out of the container. Um, now I can already see some of my worms are getting into that soil starting to go down into the soil. So now I'm gonna take this and I'm going to take some paper. So this is just a brown paper sack. You can use butcher paper, newspaper, uh, any kind of paper to wrap this around. You wanna do that so that no light is getting to the edge. The worms will avoid light. So if you put this into a dark space and there's any kind of light coming through, they'll be able to figure that out and they will stay away from the edge unless you have it covered. This covering will allow them to come all the way to the edge of the container. And then when you take it out, you can quickly, they're quickly uncover it. They're not gonna move very quickly. So if they're along the edge, they may start to try and make their way in, but it's gonna take them a while. They're slow movers. So that way your students can see not only what's happening with the soil and the sand, but also possibly some worms. And you wanna make sure that you know how many worms you put in there because another thing you can do is count the worms and see if you can see more worms in there as you go along than you started with. And there is a chance that they will start to reproduce inside. So once you have it uh, all set up like this, covered, you wanna go take it and put it into a dark uh, closet, clean, dry place, uh, any kind of closet or a drawer or a shelf that you could close, anything like that. You do want it to be a dark, place and you'll keep it in there and then you'll take it out periodically uncover it and make observations so this is how you make your earthworm habitat just a short review and hopefully your kids will really enjoy this experience